Hey everybody, welcome back. Levi Gardner here from Urban Roots. Today on this installation of our tutorial, we're gonna be talking about double digging. This is gonna be a slightly longer video than some of our others because this is a really complex part of our growing system here. Uh, but I think if you make it all the way through, you're gonna learn uh, a lot about how we do uh, this work and how you can do it in your backyard or community garden. So to get started, as we've mentioned many other times, we grow in beds here, so our beds are four feet wide and 25 feet long. And double digging is just what it sounds like. It's digging not once, but twice to prepare our soil for planting. Uh, a tiller, which is what a lot of people use, generally only gets down in the soil four to six inches, and the tap root on a carrot can go as deep as two feet. So what that often means is you may have seen your garden just with plants that feel really stunted or, or minimal, and many times it's because the roots of those plants can't penetrate or that there's water settling because there's hard pan, but a lot of our productivity plants above the surface are related to issues below the surface. Um, so uh, what we're gonna show you is the strategies and the tools that you need to effectively double dig. So as you can see here, we already have a, a kind of a trench that we've dug out. It's about four feet wide, the width of our bed. It's about one foot wide and one foot deep. Uh, and to, to dig that out, we have a couple different tools we can use. If you've got just a regular spade, that works just fine. A flat nose also works really well. Uh, the tool that we really like to use, if you can, is a short D-handled spade. Um, and you can see it's slightly rounded or flat and has a good surface for your boot to, to rest on. And that's what we use, and I'll show you how to use that a little bit later when we move up. But the most important tool is the spading fork. Uh, and we're gonna show you how to use the spading fork in, in just a minute. But before we get there, so you can see we've already dug this trench here. And in digging this trench, we've moved all the soil onto this tarp on the outside of the bed. Uh, we're actually gonna then grab uh, some finished compost. And we have just here a bucket of finished compost from food scraps. Um, you can see what it looks like right here. There's still some uh, uncomposted organic matter, but it's nice and dark and, and uh, wet. And we're just gonna work that into the trench. Uh, and what that's doing is instead of just uh, putting it on top of the surface, it's helping create those trophic webs below the surface. Because right now, like I said, we're about eight inches down or so. If you have really hard compacted soil, you might even want to go even further. Uh, we have a, a sandy loam here, so it's relatively loose, but we've double dug all of our beds. So we're going to mix that in, and we'll probably use about three to four buckets of compost over the whole bed. Uh, but if you have really low organic matter, you can always use more. So we're gonna set that to the side, and then we're gonna use our spading fork. Now, uh, this may look like a pitchfork, but it's not, and there's a couple key differences. First off, if you look at these tines, you can see they're uh, kind of square or rectangular tines. They're a lot stronger than the tines on a pitchfork. Tines on a pitchfork are for moving hay or straw, but for this, we're moving heavy earthen material, so we really need this. These are sometimes also called digging forks, and you can see that uh, they're slightly thinner than a pitchfork as well. Uh, this is one by a company called Clarington Forge. They're out of England. You can get these at uh, big box stores, uh, but if you have really heavy soils, you'll probably break them. I think this one costs almost $100, but it comes with a 25-year warranty uh, with this company out of England, so it's really ergonomically designed, and the D-handle's really nice, and I'll show you how. Um, the last thing I failed to mention is that you're gonna wanna make sure you're using your digging board which is just a four foot wide piece of plywood with a handle cut out. Uh, and it's nice, you just use a piece of plywood. And for us, that's the same width as our beds. And what that's gonna uh, help do is distribute your weight over the bed so you're not creating compaction while you're trying to work your physical soil till. So once we've got the trench dug out, we've added the compost. Now we're gonna take our spading fork and we're gonna slowly press this in. Now we've already done this bed, but if you haven't, it might take a little bit of work and so you're gonna have to wiggle it in you're gonna maybe use your heel to step in, and then you're gonna pull it back, about 45 degrees. You're gonna move over, do it again. And what we're doing here is it's both working in this compost, um, and it's also creating uh, that deep infiltration and penetration uh, to stimulate the uh, trophic webs in the soil, um, and also to infiltrate water. On all of our beds here, we had a really, really heavy rainstorm this year. And on area agricultural fields, there was standing water. We didn't have any standing water here because all that water can infiltrate. After we've done that, we're gonna go through and 
we're going to dig a, a second trench. We're going to do that by digging out the first um, the trench behind the one that we've already dug. We're going to move the soil forward. So I'm going to kind of do this and move it forward a little bit. And I'm just going to stop talking for a second here while I catch my breath. This is going to be a little challenging. The nice thing about this process is it also helps you get any big rocks out of the bed. Uh, so after we've done that, we now have the next trench. And so what we're gonna do with this trench is, again, we're gonna grab our compost, start to mix it in. And we're gonna repeat the process over and over. After that, uh, after we've spaded that, we're gonna grab our digging board and move backwards. We're gonna do this repeatedly until we get down to the end of the bed, and then we're gonna have a trench at the end. We're actually gonna grab this soil that we started with from the beginning. We're gonna drag that down there, and we're gonna fill that in. After we do that, we can add compost on the top of the surface as well, sprinkled in just like we did here, so that we have dug not one layer, but two layers of the soil. This can be a really laborious process. Uh, when you double dig a bed that's already been done, generally can take two to four hours, but if you've never done the bed before, we've had beds take six to 10 hours. It's a lot of work up front, but what you'll find is that once you have the penetration in the soil and you've developed that soil tilth, it becomes really easy to have a bed that is loose 16, 18, even 20 inches. So the taproot on the carrot has a lot more room to access. One of the important things, oh, sometimes you end up with rocks like that too. One of the important things to consider when you're double digging is moisture level when you're actually working with the bed. Uh, so you wanna make sure the moisture level is not too dry or too wet. So you're looking for about 50% um, soil moisture content. It rained a few days ago, so these beds are ideal. But if you're in a more dry area, sometimes you'll wanna stake out the area that you're working and actually water it 12 to 24 hours before. You don't want standing water, but you don't want it so dry that it's brittle. If you work a clay bed specifically when it's really dry and brittle, you're going to have a lot of struggle with doing this and it's not going to be very rewarding. You're going to end up with a lot of rock aggregates. So depending on your soil, make adjustments, but uh, some level of moisture is really helpful. Uh, once you've done this, then to activate your beds and improve them in the future, you can choose to double dig them again. But what we often do here at Urban Roots is we use our broad fork, which though it doesn't get to the full depth, of double digging, it helps activate the bed, um, work in some of that biological organic matter, and do so in a, a slightly quicker time, but with similar rewards. If you wanna learn more about that, um, make sure you check out our video on broad forking. So this is the fundamental piece of growing without tillers, and it's a lot of work, and sometimes can be a little, uh, little challenging, uh, but I promise, one, it's a great workout if you're looking for a good workout, but the productivity that you're gonna see and the yield you're gonna see in your beds is going to really be astounding. So thanks for tuning in. Know this was a little bit longer of a video. Hope you learned some things. Be sure to click on the resources throughout the video to learn more. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for checking in uh, with us at Urban Roots and we'll see you around.